Welcomes you to Port Ward, Oregon as the college basketball season is finally upon us. New seasons and new goals for the Port Ward Pilots as they host the Lewis and Clark Pioneers to open up the 2022-23 basketball season. Welcome inside the Child Center. I'm Brian Slyke, joined by my partner in crime and former Zach, Jennifer Mountain, and we're glad you chose to join us for opening night. Portland had one of the best turnarounds for a program last season, and they look to build on that momentum against the Pioneers. So what are you expecting between these two tonight, Jennifer? Everyone on the bluff has been waiting for this night after last season, the momentum. They had a great year. They're picked fifth in the WCC preseason. They have something to prove. All of these guys think that they're better than what the WCC has picked them. So it's going to be a really interesting night, a lot of different combos, a great chance to get a lot of different people on the floor, and a great chance for LC to kind of see where they're at. Well, the Pioneers lost to Oregon State in their exhibition game, but Brendan Patrick is a bright light to lead this team tonight. Yeah, averaging almost 17 half points a game, shooting 51% from the, from the field. He is a three-point threat, and LC's really going to need him to shoot the ball well tonight. The other thing is he's got to stay out of foul trouble and be a big factor on the boards. It's been many moons since Lewis and Clark knocked off the Pilots, but how can they do it tonight? Well, number one, they got to hand the physicality of the game. They're going to be undersized. They have to limit their turnovers and slow the pace a little bit. Three-point shooting is going to be huge for them. They love to shoot the three, and rebounding from all spots is going to be crucial. At the end of last season, few players were in the zone like Christian Schoen, and he's our player to watch tonight for the Pilots. He had a breakout game against USF, and it just did not stop from there. He has got to have that same momentum coming in. He can play any position on the floor except for maybe the point guard spot. Pilots need him to be explosive offensively and defensively, use his athleticism, and really be a big factor. With Leggins on the sideline, there will be energy, but it's going to take more than that to get the win tonight, Jennifer. Handling pressure is going to be a key for them all season long. Toughness, the toughness factors. Legs talks about it all the time. Rebounding, and last year at times they did not take care of the ball. This is something that he has really pointed out to us and, and we've talked about a lot so turnovers are going to be a big key well the pilots they've been itching for this new season to start and it's moments away starting lineups in the tip when we return on the wcc network Welcome back inside the Child Center. Brian Slyke and Jennifer Mountain with your call. Let's get to the starters just before we get this tip in. Actually, we'll get the tip in, and then we'll get you the starters. Lewis and Clark wins the opening tip there in black and orange. Portland is in their home whites with Portland in purple across the chest. And Robertson gets the first rebound for the Pilots this season. Tyler Robertson, Christian Schoen, Mike Meadows, Vasile Vucinich, and Jack Perry get the start for the Portland Pilots. Brendan Patrick, Jack Henderson, Ryan Trunkett, Khalil Glover Dodson, or excuse me, Glover Dodson, and Jaden Simpson get the start for Lewis and Clark. And a foul called. Well, right from the get-go, you're going to see the tempo increase. Talking to Coach Legs, you know, this last week, they want to run the basketball and just play with some open flow and get some easy buckets in the open court. Vucinic played in 28 games last season, started seven of them, 68% free throw shooter. And when we talked with Coach Legs uh, last week and specifically about Vucinic, he's a guy who stayed here all summer and usually you don't have players do that, and he put on about 30 pounds of weight because he realized he was getting his butt kicked around out there as a freshman on the D1 level. Well, put on some muscle. That's the biggest factor yeah. right there. And 
And uh, he really has improved in practice. Coach Legs really likes his toughness, and, and that's going to be a big factor. That's one of the things, you know, that they are missing is just a huge inside presence. And he's got the hops. He's got some skill. Now it's just the strength and toughness. Simpson going up against Vucinic. Pioneers have it outside. Now it's Simpson again. Inside blocked by Vucinic. Great timing, and that's one that one thing that he does has. He can get off the ground real quick, has good hands, good timing. We saw that in the opening last year. Just had a great, you know, first game as a freshman and love to see the weight, you know, coming in with muscle mass, that's for sure. Solid reach on that last block right there. Shot put up with three on the shot clock, and Henderson hits it tough right in front shot. of Robertson. Yeah, tough shot. I mean, he had a hand right in his face. Pioneers take an early one-point lead. Skip pass to Schoen in the corner. Now it's to Perry. Pilots moving around the outside. Screen set for Robertson. Back to Meadows. He wants in on the action from three, and that one rattles out. Not ball bad, you know, not bad ball movement, excuse me. And, you know, that's something that Meadows did a nice job of last year. It's hitting the three-point shot. And he's a guy who was dealing with a, an injury last year near the end of the season, and it, he took some time off, got healthy again, and Coach Legs is really looking forward to what he can do with a, a full healthy body this season. A healthy body. He's got Jack Perry back healthy and loves him and his leadership. He's an extended coach on the floor, just super smart, runs what Legs wants, understands what he wants, and will be a huge impact on this squad this year. Robertson affected that shot from Patrick. Quickly inside to show it! Oh, 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 slams it home! And there's that explosive that we talk about, and great feed by T-Rob, and a great finish. There's nothing to stop that right there. Simpson, top of the key. Gives it to Glover Dodson. Two pilots on him, tries to step away from Sholin, gives it up to Patrick. Gets the bump off of Meadows, and it goes off iron. Meadows looks stronger, too, just looking at the definition on him. Put some time in the weight room, too. Sholin missing the bunny. Well, that's what spring and summer is all about, is developing your game, your body. You know, these guys have high expectations for themselves. Lucinich gives it up to Perry. Now the Pilots take it outside, slow things down. Great little crossover by Meadows. Meadows is open. They give it up to Show on the deep three. Dead ahead. Count it. Pick it up where he left off last season. He's got five points. He can really shoot it. I mean, it's extended range. It's got NBA range. I mean, coach talks about one of, he's one of the best shooters he's ever coached. You get confidence going on a guy like that, he's going to be hard to stop. He had that big coming out party against San Francisco last season that led to that upset win for Portland over a tournament team, part of that 7-7 seven and seven conference record for the Pilots. Well, the, the, the difference between this team this year compared to last year is they have some depth. You know, I think at the end of last season, they were rolling five, maybe oh, six yeah. guys on the court. And, and that's why the tempo had to be so slow. You know, they want to run with the ball this year. And now he's got some people coming off the bench that can really contribute, and they're healthy. Patrick tries to get around Perry, hand in his face, and again, no good. Portland's doing a great job on the defensive board. It is one and done, and you got all five on the board doing a good job. Blocking call called on Patrick. That'll be his first, and that'll give us a break. 15-51 left to go in the first half. The Pilots are on a 7-0 run over the last two minutes. We'll be right back with more action. Christian Sholwin with seven points early on.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Christian showing right there, middle of the screen. Seven of the nine points right now for the Portland Pilots. LC in a little bit of a scoring drought. Oh, of their last five and haven't scored in the last three minutes and 11 seconds. And really, it's defensively. Portland's done a nice job of closing lanes, doing a nice job on the boards. Six defensive boards right off the bat. Yeah, I was about to say six defensive boards limiting the second chance opportunities for the Pioneers. As Joey St. Pierre gets his first action in a pilot uniform, he comes in for Vucinic out of the break. Pilots move it around. They find Meadows in the corner. Close out from the Pioneers, doesn't matter. Well, and LC, Lucian Clark was in his zone there, and I'll tell you, if, if you don't get a hand on these guys, especially from the three-point line, they've got a lot of people that can shoot the basketball. The Chalice can't get it to go. St. Pierre hits the deck momentarily against Sebastian Deprez. Nice addition for the Pilots, got some size, can score it. Some girth, really needs somebody to bang around inside, and that's a welcome look. That's a big body. St. Pierre can't hit the turnaround. I think the big important part for Portland with St. Pierre there, he was one of the leading blockers in the Horizon League last year at UW-Milwaukee, and that size is going to pay dividends, hopefully, for the Pilots when it comes to conference play. Oh, absolutely, and then just an added bonus. Again, that's something that they were missing is just some toughness inside and defensive presence. I have a feeling Henderson's going to be the hot hand. He's already hit two threes right in Robertson's face. Well, we talked about the fact that they love to shoot the three and they're good at it, so they've got to get a hand. Showen rebounds it midair, shoots it out to Robertson. Perry, no look to Robertson. I'll tell you, those two, Mike... Jack and T-Rob just feed off each other so well. Very selfless. I mean, they make that extra pass, swing it, and are very just kind of calm on the floor. I mean, this is their third year playing together now. One year at Eastern Washington, played last season before Perry had the leg injury against Portland State and missed the remainder of the season. Chica and Duca checks in for the first time this season. Well, and for those of you that have not seen Chica, <laughs> he's this guy, Yeah, he plays like J Draymond Green from the Golden State Warriors. I mean, just he's undersized, but you would never know. Just tough guy, does all the little little things. Five on the shot clock. Meadows hits a mid-range jumper from the baseline. Great little pull-up by Meadows there. Yeah, one of the things that Coach Legs talked about Chica in that that Draymond role, he's going to get under your skin. He's physical. He can play just about any position you really need, except kind of that point guard spot. But he's a tough guy and enforcer, and he's going to get in your face. There, he gets the steal. Right there, automatic. As soon as he comes in, he makes a difference. Good ball movement, good swings. Inside to show it, he tried to jam it, and he gets denied by Deprez. Maybe less of a denial, not a long enough reach. Yeah, probably just should have kissed that one off the glass. McFarland gets denied by Sholin. Again, there's that length and versatility. He can get off the ground really quick as well. Explosiveness, good timing. Hey, he just stayed right on his hip the entire time. Straight up with it too, nice job. Pass goes out to Chalice. Trunk it with it. Anderson's already hit two. Make it three! He's unstoppable right now for the Pioneers. Well, if you're Portland, and, and Coach Legs talked about this, defending the three-point line is a big thing for them. It's one of their keys. And I'll tell you, you got to make him put it on the ground and do something different. He's got all nine points for the Pioneers so far. Showen going in, and he gets fouled by Deprez. Well, he's not backing down, taking it right at the rim. And, and I love to see that out of him, too, because last year we saw a lot of three-point shooting out of him. You know, he stepped out, had his shots, and he's not afraid to attack the basket right now. I love that extra effort from him. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, spring and summer, you expand your game, you work on things, and um, 
we talk about the end of the season last year and the momentum coming into this year, but you know, he can do a lot of different things. He can score off the bounce, he can get to the rim, obviously, shoot the three and deep. I mean, he's got deep range. Extremely hard to guard, hard matchup for somebody. Now here's a prize recruit that just entered for the first time for Portland, Wanzi Gorosito. Lights out shooter, Coach Legs is really looking forward to seeing what he can add offensively for this Pilots Club. Yeah, he's uh, he talked a lot of praise about this kid, a little bit of flash and going to be a great addition. Pioneers, Collis gets showing to jump, great pass across the paint. But DePrez can't finish it. St. Pierre lost track of it. Henderson can make all of his shots, but it's an offensive rebound. A rare one for the Pioneers. Well, a good job by the Pioneers attacking the glass. That's one thing that they probably made that adjustment in timeout and talked about it. They had zero offensive boards in that media timeout. I'm impressed with the, the ball movement right now, too, from Lewis and Clark. They're keeping Portland on their toes. And we trail by four, just a little over halfway in the first half. You know, both teams really have been pretty solid. And Duca trying to get it to St. Pierre, and it's a turnover. And a turnover by Lewis and Clark will give it back to Portland. Well, Chica just trying to force that little high-low right there. Defense from the wing sucked in. He's got to ball fake that and hit that wing spot for a three-point shot. Klaus Endresat talking it over with his fellow referee to see who has possession. It'll stay with Lewis and Clark off of a tip. Yeah, they're calling a tip ball right there. And that'll send us to the media break. 15 to 11, the Pioneers hanging tough against the Pilots. They trail by four. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. Well, they were trying to figure out if that last pass went off the hand of Nduka. And looking at that replay, it didn't look like it touched Chica's hand. Well, we're not wearing the stripes, and Lewis and Clark is going to get that ball back. Yeah. I didn't really see a touch either, but... Uh, I mean, I love the fact that Legs is, is fighting it, though. Every possession matters to him. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, he's got a ton of energy and a ton of passion. McFarlane. Good anticipation. Had the pass across the paint. Gorosito has it, and he gets fouled as he went to attack the basket. Well, one thing that I noticed in that timeout is you, you look at the stat sheet, and the one thing that's keeping LC in the game right now is eight second chance points off four offensive boards, out rebounding Portland 10 to eight right now. And Portland has the size advantage too. There's really uh, no excuses for all those second chance points, but Pioneers playing frisky, staying in it. Gorosito lets out a deep three, and there's that elite shooting that Coach Legs is talking about. He's shaking his hands, he's hot. 
Well, doing a nice job. Once he's come in, he's made a difference. Got a steal, rebound, and now a three-point deep shot. That ends a nearly three-minute field goal drought for Portland. Seven-point lead. Patrick trying to get around Gorosita. Now it's McFarland. Machalas. Handles, gets around Gorosito, picks up his dribble. Three on the shot clock, goes over Vucinic. And it went out of bounds. One on the shot clock after the block. Nice job of, again, timing and just the ability to get off the ground quickly by Vucinic. Sholin and Robertson go to the bench. Alden Applewhite and Wyatt Lowell come in for the first time for the Pilots. So a lot of new faces coming in early on for Portland. Well, and a great opportunity like we talked about, getting different combinations in the game, you know, getting under the lights. Too easy. Wyatt Lowell on his third Division I team. Mind you, that's due to coaching changes and some injuries. Coach Leggins really likes what he's able to bring inside, and a great pass from Nduka to Vucinic, and the easy finish. Nice high-low there, and Vucinic with the nice finish. I mean, that's one thing that he struggled with a little bit last year is just, you know, catch, gather, and go, and he did a nice job and a good finish. Patrick Ooh. drives past Gorosito and uses the glass for two. Here's that tempo. Orosito's quick, too. You think of him as a shooter and a guy who's catch and shoot, but he can really handle the ball, too. White Lowell, the whack freshman of the year when he was at Utah Tech, or Utah Valley, excuse me. Apple White, a little bit short on that. Maybe a little bit of a quick trigger coming in. Get yourself going up and down the floor a little bit before you take that shot. Well, he's a guy who basically had a full year off when he was at Mississippi State, didn't play a whole bunch, and now he gets Good a steal. Hands. Good hands. Goal in transition. Ball still loose, taken in by the Pioneers. Under 10 to go until halftime. No look pass to McFarland underneath, blocked by Applewhite. So there you go. You've got a block and a steal already from the transfer from Mississippi State. Athletic. And they're going to call charge. I don't know. I kind of got blocked out. And did not see that. But uh, Applewhite, really athletic, being very handsy, very active here in this first few minutes here as a pilot. Simpson gives it up to Patrick. Apple White tried to get a block, and he got too much of Patrick there. And he'll pick up his second personal foul and has many possessions. Well, the one thing I kind of do like about this foul is a hard foul. Like, that ball is not getting to the rim. Like, if you're going to foul somebody, that's the way you do it. Make him go to the free throw line and prove it. Patrick comes from Oakland, California, the senior. Average 17.3 points per game last season for the Pioneers. Makes the first free throw. Jack Perry and Mike Meadows check back in. Vucinic and Gorosito to the bench. Look for a little defensive change here. A little full court pressure by LC. A little 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. Trying to put pressure and make Portland go a little bit quicker than they want. Let's get across. The veteran half court. guards, veteran guards right there taking care of business. Wyatt Lowell hitting the three. And that's what Coach Legs really likes about him. Even though he's a big body that he can get down into the paint, he can step out and hit that three too. Well, and that makes it a tough matchup defensively for your opponent. You know, you got a four player, a little stretch four trying to guard him. He's got some size and some strength. Good rotation. Lowell the rebound. Inside to Nduka, fake pass, got the defense to go by. And the defender closing in didn't matter to him. Nice little up and under. I mean, well, Chica's going to get two feet in the paint like that, and that deep, he's, something good's going to happen. Ten-point lead now for the Pilots. 
Just under eight minutes to go until halftime. Next dead ball leads us to a break. I like the high-low combinations that they've been going at. Trunk it with it over to Patrick. Step back three over Applewhite. Good job on the boards. That's what they need, defensive boards. Meadows inside to Nduka. Triple team kicks it out to Applewhite. Long, and the rebound goes to the Pioneers. A look of frustration on Nduka's face as he couldn't quite corral that one. Good kick out, though. Really smart. Got triple team, like you said, and wide open for the three. Travel. And that'll bring us to the media break. Lewis and Clark, no field goals in almost three minutes. The Pilots have opened up to a 10-point lead in Wild Lowell getting his first basket as a Portland Pilot. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. There's Wyatt Lowell, transfer from Utah Valley and BYU. He was a top 25 JUCO recruit last season and a prize recruit for Coach Leggins in this group. And Portland has eight points off the bench right now, which is a, a great sight to see for a team that didn't have a big bench last season. Well, that just goes, you know, to the point that we talked about with the depth. That's what they're going to need to have success and to be able to play at the pace that they want. And uh, this is a great opportunity to get these guys some run under the lights and see the different combinations against somebody else other than, you know, banging each against each other in practice. Patrick inside, partially blocked by White, or Apple White, excuse me. And he'll pick up that foul. So that's three personal fouls now on Alden Apple White. He's going to have to come out of the game. Well, kind of unfortunate, active though. I, I like his aggressiveness. You know, maybe a little bit too handsy. He got that steal in the open court a little bit. Or in the half court, excuse me, as that person with, as a opponent was driving, but uh, just a little bit too uh, aggressive and uh, maybe, you know, a little bit anticipating, you know, excitement of playing again. Free throw ends a 7-0 run for Portland. Patrick makes both of them. He now has seven points. Little 2-2-1. Two, two, Really just more of a time and score thing. Slow him down. Meadows thought about the shot. Now he drives in. Fade away goes. He's got that mid-range game that you were talking about, and you love to see that it's starting to fall for him. Yeah, it really does. I mean, you got to respect the three-point shot, and then it's just a quick couple dribbles and a nice pull-up. Mismatch with Patrick and Lowell. Now it's Lowell on Henderson. Chalice. You know, the versatility that Portland has is they can switch a lot of things. 
maybe not one through five, but there's a lot of guys that can play multiple positions on this floor. Schoen gets the rebound around Simpson, goes inside, and there's the touch off the glass. Great job of staying with that. I thought he got hit. Same. I wasn't even sure he was going to get that initial rebound. Yeah. Kind of just went up, took it over, came down, and just great job of gathering. And a travel. Bucinich will come in. Lowell heads to the bench. Portland's hit five of their last seven field goal attempts. No field goals for the last four and a half minutes for Lewis and Clark. Well, that's seventh turnover by Lewis and Clark. You know, in the beginning of the game, they were taking care of the ball. All of a sudden, a couple kind of quick ones and unfortunate turnovers. You take away your offensive possessions if you're not taking care of the ball. Just two turnovers right now for Portland early on in this game. Meadows, a hard take. He gets fouled, hits the deck. He'll head to the line. Foul is called on Those McFarland. Mike's got a little bit of a hesitation that he just kind of brings you sleep, just to sleep a little bit and then just explodes right by you. And again, he has that quick explosion that he can pull up in the, the middle of that and nice little pull up. You got to respect all of it. Respect the three-point line, respect the mid-range game, and he can get to the rim right there, try to get to the rim. Got himself to the free throw line. Not afraid of contact. You know, he's not a huge guy, but he is not afraid of contact. Meadows last year, 91% free throw shooter. In fact, this pilot team in general was a top 10 free throw shooting team in the nation. And unfortunately, they're gonna lose a decent amount of that production from the free throw line because Chris Austin uh, is not going to be playing due to that leg injury he suffered in the final game of the season last year. And he was a guy who got to the line quite a bit for Portland. As Robertson flies in for the rebound, gives it up to Meadows on the lead. Robertson left his feet, gave it up to his teammate Perry. Well, you'd like to see Harry get back on the board there again, out last year with the knee injury. And I was really happy to see him coming back with that medical red shirt. And, you know, you don't like to end your career with, without playing. And, you know, he's a coach's kid and loves the game. I, I'd anticipate him either coaching or playing pro overseas a little bit. As Robertson takes the charge, that's an all too familiar call for him. And you make a great point right there with Jack Perry. He had the opportunity. He could have left if you really wanted to, but I think there's something to say about you didn't really get to finish your college career the way that you wanted to with that injury, and so why not come back and play a little bit, with, especially with your friends already on the team too, and that extra connection with legs. Well, that, and I just think, you know, the progress that this program has made, they've talked about from day one of, of being a part of something special, and these guys have got it going, and they have the fan base coming, supporting them, and... Uh, I think he just wanted to be a part of that. He's got time to do all the other stuff and he can do the real world, <laughs> real world later. The chalice with it. The trunk it. Deprez with it on the block and it was knocked away by Jack Perry. That sends us to the media, 35-17. The Pilots have extended their lead with 3.50 left to go until halftime. We'll be right back on the WCC Network.
Christian Schoen scored seven of the first nine points for Portland. He's got 10 points overall in today's contest, so ready to go along with three rebounds and a block. As Perry almost steals the inbound pass. Well, he's definitely got, you know, gotten off to a great start, but you look at the depth like we're talking about. They have eight guys that have already scored in the game and 10 points off the bench. The two on the shot clock. McFarland put it up. It's no good. But you got the starting lineup back in the game here for the last three and a half minutes. There's that high low. Vucinic got by one defender, and he gets help with the whip of the rim. Well, nice job of playing through the contact, too. I think he got hit on the in the face almost, and just, again, strength right there. That muscle mass that he's gotten has really benefited and really done a nice job of finishing there. Portland's on a 17-2 run over the last five minutes and 15 seconds. McFarlane and Vucinic get tied up, and there's going to be a jump ball. Coach Leggins not having it. He's, he's giving the referee, Andrew Sott, an earful right now. Here's a look at it. Thoughts, Jim? Well, I almost think it was more of a travel than anything. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, he you, did. But uh, yeah. I, I did not see the jump ball. There was a lot of, a lot of hands in there. Three minutes to go until halftime. It's a 20-point lead for Portland. Pass to Schoen. Over to Robertson. T. Rob. They call him the fridge. Inside to Schoen. He keeps balling out. He'll head to the line for a three-point play. A nice pick and roll right there. Good job, defense comes up, and nice little hand one right there. Showing now at 12 points, one for two from the free throw line. Substitution for Pioneers. Tyan Jackson will come in, and McFarlane will go to the bench. McFarlane has one foul. Showing finishes off the three-point play, and it's a 23-point lead now for Portland. You know, you look at this group right now, and, and T. Rob's got two points in the half. And again, it's it's just the way these guys play together. It's not uh, they're they're just so selfish, selfish, selfless. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> they just he does what they need to do to win, and that's the bottom line. I was gonna say he may have two points right now, but I don't think he cares at all as no, long as the I'm, team is doing well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He does all the other things: ball movement, defends, rebounds. I mean, he's a guy that had a triple-double last year. A 30-point triple-double yep. with five triples in that performance. Pass to Meadows outside. Take all the way, Meadows! <laughs> Dupre's got his hand up in the hoop. Even on that shot, it still goes for Meadows. And Duca <laughs> with a gentleman lay-in. I, I think everybody was ready for him to pull that one down. <laughs> And a timeout call by Coach McFlory and Lewis and Clark with 1.49 left to go until halftime. 44-19, the Pilots have run away with it. 17-2 run over the last four and a half minutes. We'll be right back with the final seconds of half on the WCC Network. Let's look at Chica and Duca. I think, uh, well, he just shocked the entire crowd here. He had the easiest dunk, and uh, like I said, he took the gentleman's layup for the easy two. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with his two points, just like anything else. Exactly. Swansea Gorsito checks back in. Jack Perry will go to the bench for a breather. Swansea 
Henderson, who had nine points early on, he had the first nine points for Lewis and Clark. He's only taken one shot since. Deprez deep underneath the basket. Got in trouble, gives it up to Henderson in the corner. Now it's Patrick, 10 under the shot clock. Ball still loose, Meadows makes a smart business decision to not lay out in front of the bench. Really good help defense by Portland on that possession so far. I mean, they're switching one through five. They had a little bit of a mismatch. Sholin came over and gave great help. And I think they got a touch, but I'm not sure if they're gonna go look at this and review it. I think that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, they're making sure that uh, the clock, shot clock was incorrect. Oh, so they re it was at 20. They reset it. Yeah, okay. Five seconds left on this shot clock. Short clock for LC. You can see the bench right now. All the managers behind the bench letting the guys say, hey, there's five seconds left on the shot clock here. Looking for Patrick, he has it. Out near midcourt, three on the shot clock. Hesitation by St. Pierre. And Patrick never made contact with the rim. Shot clock violation. Great team defense right there. Not just in that last five seconds, that whole possession, just a really good job. So that 2-2-1 press by Lewis and Clark. Orosito only had one foot over the line. He wasn't fully on the other side. Showen tries to go up and under, and he gets denied. Probably would have had an easier chance to dump that off to somebody else. Quick. It's like he's trying to prove his physicality as the Chalice travels, and that'll be another turnover. Four turnovers now in the last six minutes for Lewis and Clark. Yeah, Chalice just going way too quick right there. Great little crossover. Just got going way too fast. Under a minute to go until halftime. Portland leads 44 to 19. Well, I like the addition of the personnel. Really have some ball handlers on the floor. Floater from Meadows goes. Well, it just seems like they have a good mixture. Even the two different groups that they've been putting out there, size, speed, defense, everybody seems to be in sync. As Henderson, who's been the dead eye from behind the arc, is off the mark there. And Duca with a block on Patrick. Two-handed block, <laughs> I might add. Sholin will pick up that foul. His first and only the fourth team foul by Portland. Very yeah, well disciplined team right now. Yeah, there's the block right there. <laughs> Good job of just staying straight up until the release. Good job. I mean, back to your point about no fouls. I mean, they're playing physical and really, I mean, attempting. There's been a lot of shot blocking attempts. Leg's not happy with that possession right there. No, he's giving an eye to Gorosito and what he needs to do to close out on that shot as Henderson now has 12 points as he hits his fourth triple of the half so far. That's just their first field goal in their last 12 attempts and ends a two and a half minute scoring drought. That goes to a scout right there. You know, it's so early in the season, not a lot of film on people, but you know a guy can shoot the three. You can't let him go off for four in the first half. You got to make him do something different. Make him put it on the ground, not give him an attempt or not let him get the basketball. Well, he seems so calm and poised behind the three-point line, too, in the quick shot, but it's a high release. It is a high release. So 46-22 after the triple made by Henderson. 2.3 seconds left until halftime. Gorosita replaced by Jack Perry after that last play. This is more of a learning opportunity yeah. right here. Last game, situ last minute, sec sec seconds situation right here that you can use down the road. Robertson into the corner to show and puts it up, beats the buzzer, oh, and just missing that corner three. But Good execution. Por yeah, uh, but Portland will take a 24-point lead into halftime. 
We'll be right back on the WCC Network when we talk stats and highlights through that first half. We'll be back with more. I love the fact that higher education can be transformative. It can change someone's trajectory of their life. So it's my hope that the University of Portland, we are the transformative Catholic university in the West Coast. I was born and raised in the great state of New Jersey. I am the youngest person in my family. I have some amazing parents who have sacrificed a lot to provide an education for me and my brother. You know, they, we grew up knowing you're going to get your education, you're going to go to church, and anything is possible as you go forward in your life. Well, my name is Rob Kelly, and I am the president of the University of Portland. We were simply thrilled when Dr. Kelly accepted the opportunity to come to the University of Portland. We spent hours, weeks, months discerning this important decision, and he was exactly what this university needs moving forward. I think you've already seen that on campus already. Dr. Kelly's everywhere. He's ubiquitous. Uh, he's energetic. I think he's a tremendous role model. His experience in higher education at this university and other universities will serve him so very well. There's no one more prepared to lead this university into its next great chapter here on the bluff. One. This is my first day with lots of students on campus in a, in a physical format. The students are back and this is the beginning of it. It's like Christmas morning. Clearly a person that was able to build connections and relationships with people. His prior experiences, it was very intentional that Rob was preparing himself to one day hopefully have the opportunity to lead a Catholic university and I'm grateful that he chose us as much as we chose him. 
been so blessed to know him for over 24 years and one of the very first conversations we had we found out we both loved higher ed and he talked about I want to be a college president one day and it really struck me because my father was a college president and so I saw a lot of similarities in somebody that I you know greatly admire and love more than anything he is like the cheerleader for our family my children Alex and Addison first they ground me completely they give all of this work that I'm doing um, and everything meaning. To be such a collaborator, communicator, and somebody that really deeply believes in justice, it seemed like those were the things that he just naturally is. I have been extremely blessed to have different people in my life. People like Sister Frances, she was my fourth grade school teacher. I remember those little lessons that she taught us, and I bring that with me into the work that I do now. My message to students would be that they're loved want to walk with them and accompany them as they go off and do amazing things in the world. And we're always going to be there. It's about community, and we're going to help them to get connected as we go forward in life. Welcome home and go Pilots. Dr. Kelly, on behalf of the entire Board of Regents, we are thrilled that you are finally here on the bluff. Dr. Kelly and his family, so grateful that you've become a part of the University of Portland. Can't wait to see all of the fantastic things that we can accomplish. Welcome, Dr. Kelly, to Villa Maria Hall. Welcome, Dr. Kelly, to the University of Portland. We're so proud of you and wish you the best of luck at University of Portland. Congrats, Dad, on becoming president. I'm really proud of you. Every day, remember where your strength lies. God and heaven are below our feet and above our heads, and so always look up and remember that you are loved, and you can do this. Congratulations.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Halftime right now between the University of Portland and Lewis and Clark. The Pilots have a 46 to 22 lead right now. It was a close first few minutes between these two teams. Lewis and Clark started out shooting pretty hot, and then the Pilots extended that lead in the later por portion of that first half, going on a couple of 17-2 to two runs. But your thoughts on that first half, Jen? Well, I thought defensively they did a nice job, um, especially, you know, maybe the second half of that first half and really doing a nice job of help defense closing lanes down doing a better job on the boards they're still getting out rebounded right now 20 to 16 that's something I'm sure that they're going to address but I think overall like I, I really have been impressed with the depth I think people have come in and contributed um, and there's a lot of different combinations I, I feel like he's going to have a lot of different weapons to go to and uh, you know you look at this the Stassi Robertson only has two points yeah. in the half but still a factor and uh, there's a lot of positives to take from this first half. Well, one of the leading scorers for the Portland Pilots was Christian Schoen, and he was lights out to start for Portland, scoring seven of the first nine points. He ended with 13 points in that first half. Yeah, started off the game with a huge dunk, a couple different shots from the three-point line, and, you know, he, we talked about it in the open, his explosiveness, it's his versatility, being able to score inside out, and um, just did a nice job, and I, I think, you know, again, you look at the whole picture right here and there's just so many weapons and he's a he's one that has really you know I think after last year has found his confidence is used to the system is really doing a great job for him and I think that last play right there really proves that he's more than just a shooter than what we've been talking about he goes after the rebounds he's physical inside from what we've seen in that first half he, it's looking like a more complete player than what we saw last year yeah he is a tough matchup you know he really is a tough matchup like I said I mean he, he can play any position except for maybe that point guard spot like we talked about and all of a sudden you got you know a 6 9 6 10 guy guarding a two guard it's a bit it's a big difference now let's take a look at some of the stats here from that first half and Portland is shooting lights out 56.3 percent to just 22.6 percent for Lewis and Clark the three-point shooting is about the same you'd like to see that pick up for the pilots now the big disappointing portion of the stat sheet right now is Lewis and Clark they are outsized by Portland but they are leading in that rebounding category 20 to 17 Jen yeah you know and I, it's you know quality of missed shots and so forth that goes into that as well but I look at this stat sheet and the biggest thing that I take is number one the, the two turnovers in the first half very composed. They're doing a nice job of taking care of the ball, limiting, you know, mistakes and, and just solid play, getting quality shots. I mean, they're shooting 56% from the field because of the type of shots that they're getting, and that's points in the paint, getting good looks. Yeah, two turnovers, only four fouls, too, with how fast and physical that they've been playing on defense. 20 points in the paint for Portland. That's a big one. 13 points off of those turnovers from Lewis and Clark. And then you like to see some of that bench production for Portland to start to creep up, especially with the two units, it seems like they're rolling out. Yeah, I think that's going to be a huge key. And then, you know, just moving forward, you know, they're going to need people coming off the bench and playing different roles. And, and this is just another opportunity to find out what they have in their arsenal going into uh, Wednesday. Well, it wasn't necessarily a perfect half from the Pilots. What would you like to see out of them in this second half against the Pioneers? Well, I, I, I want to see the rebounding. You know, that those numbers change, but uh, I, I liked what they did offensively and quite frankly, what they did defensively. I think closing lanes, not allowing. They need to make sure that they defend three point shot, make that make him put it on the ground and doing a better job of just going in transition. He he talked to us the other day, uh, Coach Leggins, about wanting to go faster. I'd like to see the pace go a little bit quicker. We'll see if the pilots can do that. You talked about the three-point shooting. All four of the three-pointers that fell were from Henderson for the Pioneers. Otherwise, the rest of the team, well, they went 0 for 7 from behind the arc. So find the, sh the hot hand right now. Try your best to defend him and, and see if you can get started there. I mean, my goal at, at this point at halftime was like he doesn't get another three for the game. Yeah, that's a good goal to have as the starters will begin on the court for Portland. It'll be Schoen, Vucinich, Meadows, Perry, and Robertson. I thought Mike was real good in the first half, scoring in a variety of different ways, running the show. You know, you got two primary ball handlers on the floor with Jack and Mike, yeah. and uh, just solid. Yeah, Meadows had 12 points, four rebounds, and three assists. You know, he had the first triple-double in pilot history last season against Willamette in the opener. And there he pokes it away from Henderson. 
Patrick gives it to Simpson. Vucinic being physical, not giving up any ground. And that ball ends up in the hands of the Portland Pilots. Well, Portland really lucky right there. Didn't do a good job of blocking out from the guard spot. Came, guy came from the opposite wing, almost got that off the board. Little 2-2-1 two, two, yep. again. Pass to Schoen into the corner. And the pass is tipped, taken away. It's Glover Dodson. And it falls for Ryan Trunkett, the first three that isn't from Henderson. Sholin a little lazy on that pass in the corner and good job by LC in transition. That's a great time to shoot the three. Pilots get through the press. Now they keep it outside, pass it inside to Vucinic and it's broken up by Trunkett. Well, the one thing, you know, you come in with a big lead in this second half, you can't lose your intensity level. And right now, these last two possessions, a little bit slow, a little bit sloppy. Got to make sure that you're bringing 40 minutes no matter what. He talked about protecting the home court, and that's a big deal for Coach Leggins is make sure that you do your job and take care of business at home. Coach, Coach Leggins was getting a lot of praise for what his team did last season. He's shown up on a couple of lists of you know, top 10 coaches at the mid-major level, and he's done such a nice job, not not just here at Portland, but what he did at Eastern Washington, too. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a good one, and I'll tell you, he's got... You know, he's got these guys believing in what they're doing. It's a process, but uh, you know, he's the one that gets to see them day in and day out, and he knows what they're capable of, and uh, high expectations, and uh, he doesn't like to lose. I love that about him. Robertson got his hand in the face of Henderson after flying by him. Causes the miss, Vucinic. High hands going straight up against Simpson, no foul called. And there's a travel. Again, just kind of sloppy the beginning of this second half and great rebound. You take one dribble, you pick that thing up and you find your guard. Portland already three turnovers after having only two in that first half. Just not the same intensity level. Anderson moving inside, his pass is tipped. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Lewis and Clark. Patrick relatively quiet, only six points, one of eight shooting. Four of those points have come from the free throw line. Simpson fighting against Vucinic again. Vucinic goes high, gives up the offensive rebound, and it's slapped back out, another offensive board. Glover Dodson can't make it. So, Port Yeah, Portland very fortunate there again. They're just not doing a job of blocking out from the guard spot. Meadows picks up his dribble, no look pass to Vucinic, off the hands and out of bounds. A little bit of a tough angle, but one that should have been caught mm -hmm. for sure. Lead now at 21 for Portland. Patrick goes inside, picks up his dribble, off the hand of Simpson, and will get over and back. Coach Lake is called a timeout yeah. here. This is a good timeout. Yeah, he's having none of this energy problem that Portland has right now out of the half. He wants to nip that in the bud right now. So timeout called by Portland. 17-33 left to go in the game. 46-25. We'll be right back on the WCC Network.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Brian Slyke and Jennifer Mountain with your call. It's a 46-25 lead right now for the Portland Pilots over the Lewis and Clark Pioneers. Timeout just called by Coach Legs, and I'm sure he had quite a few words for his team. A sloppy start to the second half. They already have four turnovers, and again, being out-rebounded by the Pioneers, they've given up 11 offensive rebounds in this game. Yeah, three in the last two and a half minutes coming out of halftime, and, you know, we talked about this. It's It's been an issue. They've got to have presence inside, but right now the guards really aren't doing the job from the perimeter of blocking somebody out. And LC's flying five to the boards. Vucinic's pass was late, leading to a turnover. Trunkett with it. Goes inside to Simpson, who threw off Meadows, and Duco looks like he took an elbow to the face. That shot did not go, and, and Duke is the one that's called for the foul. That'll be his first personal and the first one on the pilots. Well, I think he was deep in the restricted circle, but he definitely might have got hit in the chin there. Yeah, he's in the, in the circle. And yeah, as Simpson went up, he sort of led with that elbow, and it caught in Duca. Well, the Pioneers perfect from the line so far. Five for five. Showen will come back in for Vucinic. Well, definitely with this lineup, a little bit quicker. You got Christian in there, maybe to do a little bit better job on the boards for him. Again, he had that huge performance at San Francisco, 23 points, 18 rebounds, and major factor in that win. Meadows, acrobatic, finish, and one. Great body control in the air, man. Good finish. Lemke doing the push-ups over there on the bench after the end one. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you guys want to watch bench, that bench is active and moving the whole game. There you go. You just see him go down at the very end there. As Meadows goes to the line. One for two today. Team is five for seven, and the team is now six for eight. 75% free throw shooting team today. Well, the thing about a game like this, too, again, they've had this little bit of a sloppy start in the second half, but it's how you play and how you win the basketball game. Now, they made it put him on the ground right there, but nice little floater. No, by Anderson. Closed, yeah, he closed out quick on him. Yep. I'd rather that happen, though. I mean, take that three-point line away from him. 14 points now for Henderson. He leads all scores for Lewis and Clark. Mm. Pass broken up. It'll stay with the Pilots. A couple of these passes have been late. We saw such crisp, succinct passing in that first half from the Pilots. It seemed like everybody knew where they were supposed to be. And... Not as crisp here to start off the second half. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of just looking at him. You know, make a ball fake, and then you, instead of going inside, you have a deep corner opposite and just zip it. Get some good ball movement. That one just kind of floated in the air, a little too soft. Meadows picks up his dribble, gets it to Robertson. No look, cross court taken away by Henderson. Well, Legs talked about turnovers. And how last year, you know, they'd have moments where he doesn't need much room to get it off. No, he does not. 17 points now for Henderson. He leads all scorers. Robertson goes off iron. And a long rebound for Trunkett. My point that I was trying to say is just it's... It's how you perform. You got to get better every single night, no matter who you play. You got to get better. Simpson slides and a charge. Robertson takes his second charge of the night. Simpson can't believe it. He's got his hand on his head. He thought he was going to the free throw line. Robinson's just so smart defensively. He done a, did a great job. Holds his ground. Yep. Easy call. Planted his feet. And takes the charge. 15-29 left in our game. It's a 49-32 score lead for Portland. We'll be right back on the WCC Network.
He's so cute. Yeah. Well, it's been the Pioneers who have taken charge here in the second half. They've scored 10 points to just Portland's three. In fact, the Pioneers have eight points off of five turnovers by the Pilots. And as a reminder, the Pilots only had two turnovers in the first half. Robertson finally bangs a three home. Well, that's a good job of just breaking it down with the pass and easy look from the three-point line for T-Rob. 20-point lead, Henderson. Throws one up, an awkward shot. I think he wanted the foul called. Meadows picks up his dribble, gets it out to Robertson. Now Schoen with it. Skip pass to Schoen into the corner. Goes by his man, and he's denied by DePrez. No emotion out of him after that. Well. He's been trying to attack that basket and throw it down ever since that first dunk. Yeah. There's been three or four different plays where he's going for the dunk. He probably could have put it off the glass, though. Yeah, and he's just he's just not getting that call. Nice little jump hook by t Rob. This is what I love about Tyler Robinson. Team's been a little bit sloppy. He just slows the pace a little bit and takes over the game. You know, quick five points just to kind of settle everything. Robertson now has seven points. He had two in the first half. Trunkett, the lefty hits his second three. Borosito got screened right before that. And that's what allowed him to get open. Robertson, cross court into the corner. Borosito answers with a three of his own. Well, Coach Legs talked about his ability to shoot the basketball, and so far I've been really impressed. Not with the, only with his ability to shoot it, but his ball handling and just charisma on the floor. And they're going to call that one on Gorosito. That'll be his first personal and the second one on the Pilots here in this half. He seemed to take his defensive approach a, a bit more serious right there, stayed in front of his man, but at the last second, got caught with a foul. Patrick with six points, four of them from the free throw line, and that's his first miss. Looking at Chica right now, he's chirping at Patrick on the free throw line after that miss. He's still talking to him. It's part of that mentality, he wants to get in your head any moment that he can. Still chirping at him after the free throw. Well, that's part of his game, yes, that's for is. sure. Sidestep by Robertson, missing it, and Duca the putback, and they're gonna call a block now. Very late call. Yeah, I mean, the ball was through the rim. From Nduka already. DePrez gets called for that one. That'll be his second personal. Yeah, really late call. Yeah, very strange. I mean, it seemed like the putback was already in. Tyan Jackson enters 
as Glover Dodson goes back to the bench. T-Rob now with nine points. Looks like he might have got hit in the face and maybe a little bit of a bloody nose. It was from a couple of possessions ago when Robertson was inside. So I saw him reach for his face as they were going back down the court. Henderson, another quick release three. This one's short. Showing, chasing it down, and I think he'll get called for the foul here. That'll be his second personal. Yeah, he kind of had his arm wrapped, trying to gather that decent effort. Again, just these guards from Lewis and Clark just flying at the boards. Alden Applewhite comes in. He's got three fouls, so something to keep an eye on. Trunkett's already hit two threes and gets some help from the glass. He's got three threes now and nine points overall to go along with four rebounds. Little miscommunication defensively. They were trying to switch something up and just got caught on it. Robertson still going after the loose ball. It's taken away by Patrick. Still a 20-point lead for Portland. Patrick picks up his dribble, splits the defense, no good. Deprez, the putback, also no good. And offensive rebound, Patrick, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. Well, Lewis and Clark competing, especially every time that shot goes up, they are flying to the boards trying to make something happen. And right now, Portland's really struggling to back somebody out and be physical. 13 offensive rebounds now for the Pioneers. Robertson comes off, Vucinic on. Mm. And Applewhite gets the rebound. Under 13 minutes left to go. Vucinic trying to work for position against Deprez. Sets the screen for Meadows. Hesitation dribble, in, dumps it off to Vucinic, and just over the top. Good job by Meadows, just kind of hanging in the air. Didn't really have anywhere to go. Last minute, a little dump off right there, and good finish by Vucinic. Patrick with it. 10 on the shot clock. They switch to Vucinic. Got the mismatch they wanted. Gives it up to Deprez. Offensive rebound. And still can't go. Portland is being very lucky right now that these putbacks are not going down for Lewis and Clark. They're giving up too many offensive boards. Very fortunate right yeah. at that last possession and not giving up a putback. Vucinic. Trying to go inside to Nduka, and I think Trunkett's going to be called for the foul. He is. That'll be Trunkett's third personal foul, and the fourth team foul on Lewis and Clark. That also sends us to break. 20-point lead for the Portland Pilots over the Lewis and Clark Pioneers, 61-41. We'll be back with more action on the WCC Network.
Shante Leggins in his second season at the helm of the Portland Pilots. Frustrated after that last attempt from the Pilots. The second half has just not really been going their way. Pioneers have been playing better basketball this half, too. Well, they certainly have been the aggressor, and Portland has not responded. Uh, Coach Leggins, I'm not happy, I'm sure, with this first eight minutes. And another triple goes down for Lewis and Clark. They're now 9 of 22. They're shooting 41% from behind the arc. Lucinic gives it up to Gorosito, who's in the paint and had it taken away by Ichalas, but he gets a foul call. Ryan his fourth personal. Trunke gets called for that foul, actually. That'll be his fourth personal. Yeah, just a little too handsy on that penetration. And they're saying it's 10 now, not Trunkett, which is where my confusion came from. So Ichalas picks up his third personal. Trunkett still only has three fouls. Still the fifth team foul, though, on Lewis and Clark. Perry, nice touch pass down low to Lowell on the block. Goes inside, the left hand isn't good, and Deprez will be called for the foul. His third. Good patience inside, that position, had somebody on his back, nice little jump hook with the left. Team huddle for the Pioneers, who was in there? <laughs> Chica. <laughs> He's one of those guys that you, you do not like to play against, but love to have on your squad. He's a nuisance, but in a good way for the pilots, you know? It's yeah. <laughs> That's a violation. Yeah, yeah, and I think Nduka was early on that one. He understands, gave the thumb up. No, it's, it's, a, it's against Lewis and Clark. Oh. Well, excuse me. The goal will make that. He now has four points. He's had a few good minutes coming in. Definitely bright spot. There it is. Immediately ran up the court. Apple White. Ooh. Pass off the mark, and Duca chasing it down. You can see the frustration on Coach Leggins' face after that last pass. Yeah, just not real crisp, and there's a little behind the back he talked about. And that one will be on Trunkett, so that is his fourth personal foul. The seventh one on Lewis and Clark, which should be a one and one. Yep. His fourth personal, seventh team foul. So Nduka will go to the line. He's got four points on the day. His first time at the free throw line. Look at the coaching staff and the bench for Portland. Nduka missing that one, and Lowell. I thought he might get called for the foul. It's actually going to be on Henderson. That's his first personal, the eighth one on the Pioneers. Yeah, it looked like he grabbed his arm. I just saw Lowell trying to make a move for the ball, but he couldn't. Well, unfortunate, two big misses from the free throw line right there. You got to capitalize, make him pay for mistakes. Jackson, tough take, and the putback no good from Deprez. Lewis and Clark basketball. And there's the effort on the offensive boards right there that Portland is just struggling with. Good crossover. And a foul on Gorosito. That'll be his second personal. 
quick little crossover by Patrick right there to get to the rim. Just a nice job. And that's going to happen to the young freshman against the senior. Eh? Even though it's not the same level of play. I mean, those, Patrick's a good player. Well, a lot of times, you know, just the biggest difference is our size. I mean, obviously there's some skill level difference too, but a lot of times it's size. Deprez going up against Lowell. Nice move, but he's short on the shot. Trapped underneath and broken up by Meadows, saved by Henderson. One dribble, puts up the shot, front iron. Wow. Foul on the ground. It's on Robertson. That's his first personal and the sixth team foul by the Pilots. Mm. Robertson on Jackson. Now it's to Patrick. Jack Perry's on defense. Under 10 on the shot clock. Achalas splits the defense. Tried to go off the glass, nowhere close. And the rebound, Robertson. Yeah, that was a little bit forced. Perry gets it inside to Nduka around Henderson off mm. iron. It's a good look, just didn't finish. Good job by Chica of making him put it on the ground. Chico will take the foul here. That'll be his second personal. Both these teams struggling right now. Lewis and Clark hasn't scored in about two minutes and 26 seconds. Meanwhile, no field goals in almost four minutes now for Portland. And they've had decent looks. I mean, a couple little jump hooks, you know. Five footers just not falling for them. And again, it, to me, right now, the biggest issue is the boards. And right now, they're getting exposed. Anderson can't complete the one and one. Meadows, no look to Lowell in the corner. Three off iron. Another quality look, just not falling. In Portland, you just gotta defend. If you're not making buckets, you gotta defend. And low in that restricted area. He'll get called for that foul. Good strong take by Simpson to the rim. First foul on Lowell, the eighth team foul for Portland as Simpson goes to the line. Vucinic comes in for Lowell. He's gonna, he's gonna help Portland. Lowell's done a nice job tonight, in and out a few times, and he's got some good size. He can play inside out. I, I think it's a good mix of bigs that they have. They don't necessarily yeah. all do the same thing and have their own special talent that they add to this team. Vucinic inside, picks up his dribble, finds T-Rob, 13 on the shot clock. Put back no good, Sholin's still fighting for the rebound, finds Perry. The three goes! Great time to shoot a three is on an offensive board and a kick out. Perry's just so rock solid from the three-point line. And, you know, we've had multiple opportunities where they've just missed a few easy looks. And a great job right there of a kick out. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. 65-46, the Pilots lead the Pioneers.
fourth inside the Child Center, 65-46. The Portland Pilots are leading the Lewis and Clark Pioneers, but no shade towards the Pioneers. They're actually leading this second half by five points, 24 to 19 against Portland. Yeah, they've really come out aggressive. You know, really nothing to lose and uh, doing a nice job of shooting the ball a little bit better. They're still only shooting 25% for the game. And, you know, you look at the offensive board stuff, more misses, more opportunities to go get the basketball. But if you're Coach Leggins, it's, it's how they're rebounding that would concern me. That last basket ends a three and a half minute field goal drought for Lewis and Clark. Showing to Vucinic inside and a foul called before the shot. It looks like Simpson will be called for that one. That'll be his fourth personal foul. Vucinic, 68% free throw shooter last season. Two for two already today. Make it three for three, and, and he'll have an opportunity to finish off the one and one. I, I see the improvement with him over the summer, and, and obviously the strength and so forth, doing a really good job. And he's just going to continue to get better and better and better as he matures. So four for four now for Vucinic at the free throw line. Aggressive defense from Gorosito, and he'll get called for the foul all over the hip of Ichalas. That's a hard one because you can't really switch it with Vucinic. That's a huge mismatch. He's got to do a good job of either fighting over that or going under the screen. Nico Chalas at the line. Shoot one. So it'll be one and one. Henderson will come in now for Lewis and Clark. Jackson heads to the bench. Henderson, 17 points, I believe, still leads all scorers. It does. Mike Meadows has 15. He leads the Pilots. High release, really hard to defend. Yeah. You know, he's had a few with somebody right in his eye. I mean, you said it early in the broadcast. He doesn't need much space to put up that shot with his release. And I mean, in front of T-Rob a couple of times, I think he got the best of Meadows one time. Robertson runs down the rebound. He now has six rebounds, six assists to go along with nine points. He's been a little bit quiet, but again, just kind of that solid do what team needs. How about a seventh assist after he gives it up to Vucinic, who now has 12 points. Good pick and roll right there. And a lot of on-ball stuff. I mean, Coach Lagan said that's something that they're going to look to do a little bit more of this season. Simpson battling with Vucinic down low. And Vucinic ends up with the rebound. Good job of just holding his ground right there. Joel steps into the three. That one's short. Taken by Henderson. Fighting off Gorosito around Vucinic, too high off the glass and taken away by Sholin. Mismatch inside. Yep, you got Patrick going up against Robertson. Meadows getting the separation back inside to Vucinic, and he gets fouled from behind. We'll see if that one's on Simpson. No, they're going to call that on Henderson. That'll be Henderson's second personal. Tenth team foul, so double bonus now for Portland. Again, Vucinic involved in that pick and roll situation, did a nice job rolling to the rim and missed the first one and then just got nailed coming th from the backside. Proved his free throw shooting too. Five for five now from the stripe. He's got 13 points to go along with four rebounds and three blocks. And a timeout called.
Well, you, what you're talking about, though, you know, you, you want your big to be able to go to the free throw line and, you know, do a nice job, shoot a high percentage, especially if you're just going to get opportunities like this off of pick and roll situations throughout the season. That's going to be a big, a big pickup for him. Right now, it's a 21 point lead for Portland. I mean, it's, it's an impressive performance for him, kind of the. A new coming out party, you can say, because of the mass that he's put on, muscle that he put on, the extra 30 pounds. Yeah, he's had some really good moments, both offensively and defensively. Both teams struggling from the field. Portland just two of their last 10. Lewis and Clark is one of their last eight. As we've got 6.16 left to go in the game. Six for six. Vucinic now has 14 points. Little one, two, two. Looking to trap, make something happen. Maybe pick up the tempo a little bit. And a charge called. This time it's Nduka who takes it. And that'll be on Ichalas. That's his fourth personal foul. Good anticipation by Chica right there and just holding his ground and caught him up in the air with that little floater and easy call going the other direction. Those are those little things right there that make a huge difference. Robertson, quick drive on the hesitation. And Henderson called for that foul, so his third personal foul. So two shots now for T-Rob at the line. I mean, you talk about versatility right there. I mean, playing the point guard, coming down the floor right here, he can play pretty much any spot on the floor. Can get to the rim, can shoot the three, is just so, so smart. And after that made free throw, he now has double digit points with 10. And that's the fourth pilot with double digit points. Sholin's got 13, Vucinic 14, Meadows with 15. And Robertson, 10 points at the moment, six rebounds, seven assists, make it 11 points now. One, two, one, one again, just trying to make something happen here, go a little quicker. McFarland back in the game for the Pioneers. Ooh, hard fall, looked like his foot got tripped up unintentionally. He's all smiles as he gets up though. Mike Meadows is called for that foul. Quick first step. It's Meadows' first foul, the team's 10th foul. With all these fouls now, there's just like no momentum, there's no continuity, there's no flow of there's play no right flow, now. Yep. Clock keeps stopping what seems like every five seconds because of a foul. <laughs> Gives it up to Gorosito. Knocked down a couple of those already. This time it doesn't go. Meadows stays in front of Patrick. Good defense. And Chica's there for the rebound as there's a foul on Lewis and Clark. So two shots coming up. Patrick called for that one. That'll be his second personal. Well, Portland in the last few minutes here has done a much better job on the boards, not giving up O boards, doing a better job being physical inside, and certainly going to be happy. Coach Lincoln's going to be happy with that. At the line this year. 37 rebounds for Lewis and Clark. 17 of them have been the offensive rebound. 
And Duca missing his first free throw. And again, you know, you go back to the numbers game a little bit. Shooting the ball 25%, there's a lot of misses to go get. But uh, again, I think it's more of like what's really happened on the O'Glass for a portion of the game, not the whole game. So Duca makes his first free throw of the night. Now one for three from the charity stripe. Five points go along with three rebounds, a block steal, and an assist. Spin inside, gives it up to McFarlane. Oh, well, that's a good find. It was too strong off the glass. Good save from Duca too. Meadows the hesitation. Hits the three. 18 points. He's just been super solid tonight. Not a lot of emotion, just kind of chill when he, you know, takes what, what's given to him, and I, I like it. 18 points, four rebounds, five assists, and a steal. That's the stat line for Meadows. Pretty solid performance. The Prez using the glass over in Duca. Prez hasn't put up a lot of points, but he's got eight rebounds, five of them offensive. And Meadows. he's been a physical presence inside. Yeah, he's held his own. I mean, he's gone up against Vucinic. He's gone against St. Pierre. Lowell as well. I mean, these aren't small guys. He's going after showing over the top with the block. Meadows gives it up to Gorosito. Corner three. Front iron and DePrez with the rebound. He now has nine. Good find by Meadows. That's exactly where you got to be if you're a shooter and your point guard's driving the baseline. You got to find that that corner spot. Gorosito trying to plead his case, trying to figure out what he did wrong there. That'll be his fifth personal foul, so he is... Oh, correction, that's his fourth personal foul. That'll send us to break, though. 3.33 left in our ball game. It's a 24-point lead for the Portland Pilots. 77-53, we'll be right back on the WCC Network. We've got a few soccer players in the stands for the Portland Pilots, both teams. Having a good season. Women's team just found out they're going to be hosting. Arizona State on Saturday. Yep. So big opportunity for them and here on the bluff. As Brendan Patrick goes to the free throw line, seven of nine today. Make it eight of 10 now. He has 12 points. Portland soccer has been really good for a long time. Oh, yes, they have. Apple White skies for that rebound. One of the few pilots to not score today so far. Mm. 
Mm. Halfway down and out. Yeah, that was a good look. That was in and out for sure. TJ Muhammad, who just checked in for Lewis and Clark, finds DePrez, who now has six points. Corsito squares up for the three. Iron. Henderson takes away the rebound from Sholin. Well, he's Hunt. certainly not afraid to pull the trigger, that's for sure. And I think that's what Coach Leggins really likes about him is he basically has that green light to shoot if he really thinks he's open. Yep. Turnover by Patrick. Lowell and Vucinich will come in, and Duca and Robertson head to the bench. And Tyler Robertson. Corsito putting on the burners momentarily. He's got a nice handle. Schoen takes the three, now it's inside to Lowell. Out to Applewhite, he's looking for his first points, he's got him! Triple goes, that ends a two minute and 10 second drought. So now the only pilot not to score is St. Pierre. And it doesn't look like he'll be coming off the bench for the remainder of this game. DePrez will be the shooter. Gorosito just picked up his fifth personal foul, so he'll head to the bench. I think that was a little frustration foul. Gave him a little forearm right there. Six points and one steal. And now we're gonna get Coleman Lemke into the game. Love it. High energy guy. Ultimate team guy right yeah. there. 100 percent. I mean, I don't think I see anybody else get as excited for their teammates as he does. He's a sneaky good shooter, too. You don't want to leave him open in the corner. He'll make you pay. Yeah, he can shoot it. Lemke from Las Vegas, Nevada. 80 to 58 as we close in on the final two minutes. This match inside. Yeah, they trunk it against Lowell. It. They didn't see it. Applewhite was looking that way. Now Lemke goes baseline, finds Lowell outside the three-point line. Lowell knocks down the triple. He's got seven points. And I believe that that's an assist for Lemke, isn't it? Yeah. Trunk it. Goes left of the hoop. Applewhite pushing it up to Lemke. Under 90 to go. Inside to Vucinic. And the lay in. Assist from Showland. Vucinic got 16. He's had a good night, and, and I'm really impressed with some of the different possessions that he's had and definitely has made an improvement from last season. And DePrez now with 10 points and nine rebounds. And Mohammed will be called for the foul. Mohammed just a freshman from Inglewood, California. with it near the corner, gives it up to Henderson. Under a minute to go. Whistle 
47.1 seconds left in the game. Foul called on Sholand. Henderson will go to the line. I'll tell you, he's crafty. Very deceptive speed-wise, and like we talked about, that high release on the three-point shot doesn't need a lot of time, but if you don't respect it, it's going off, and then right here, just getting by people, getting himself to the rim. Anderson will make that one. He now has 19 points. And that now takes over the game high as we're under 40 seconds left. Lowell into the corner. It's Lemke. Can't get the basket. And a put back by Vucinic. 18 points ties Mike Meadows for the team high. points, seven rebounds for Vucinic. No shot clock, Applewhite can dribble it out. Bukashin telling Vucinic to put up a three in the final seconds. And that does it from inside the Child Center. An 89-62 victory for the Pilots over Lewis and Clark. And Jen, I think uh, I'm not too far out of line in saying the second half was a bit tighter than what we were expecting. Probably not what Coach Legs wanted out of his team, but overall, a pretty good performance putting up 89 and getting the victory over the Pioneers. Yeah, I think there's a lot of positives to take from tonight. And really, I think the first 10, 10 minutes of that second half, probably not the best performance, but they, they switched in gear and did some different things that last little bit here. Closed the gap rebounding-wise and offensively got some looks. You know, it's uh, it, again, it, you got to play for 40 minutes and sometimes with a big lead you kind of let up and obviously they you know learned their lesson and kind of jumped it up another notch at that last 10 minutes of the game as the teams are shaking hands let's take a look at some of these stats from today's matchup Lewis and Clark shot 27 percent like you were mentioning throughout today's game Jen and that's what led to so many rebounds for them but the pilots came back tough in that category ended up matching them with 41 overall but three-point shooting stepped up a bit for Portland they shot just over 30 percent and the field goal wise you know you'll take that 48 percent on the day, I mean, that's pretty good shooting for your squad. And really, I think the nine turnovers is a real positive. There was a, a very beginning of that second half. I think they had four turnovers, what, in the first three minutes. And to only end the game with nine, I think, is a positive. See the love right there from Vucinic and Lemke. And as usual, the guy's going to go and say hello to the fans out on the sideline. Here's some of the other stats that went down. I, the size advantage was something that we noticed in the game, and, and we saw it with points in the paint, especially going high-low multiple times. Yeah, I think the points in the paint and, uh, you know, bench points are real big positives for Portland and something that they can really, you know, take a positive going into Wednesday because definitely a different opponent. Well, we are waiting to get Mike Meadow or Mike Meadows, excuse me, on the headset. In fact, I think he's got Coach Legan's son in his arms right now. Mike, if you can hear us, can you give me a thumbs up at all? All right, we got a thumbs up. Mike, you know, you're finally not going up against your teammates up in practice. How did it feel to get back out there tonight? It's, it's awesome, man, just to be able to compete. We got a great group of guys, you know, so if practice gets pretty competitive, we all want to win. So this was big for us. Second half kind of came out a little bit flat. Last 10 minutes, I thought you guys jumped it up a notch, but what can you learn, you know, as a team? You have some veterans on there. You know you can't have that moving forward. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's all film. It's great film. We'll learn from it. We'll get better. Um, we got to box out better. We got to rebound um, and hold each other accountable, which is uh, a lot going to follow me and T-Rob as far as the leadership standpoint. Well, it seems like you guys have some health right now. You kind of had two different rotations going into the game. What makes this team so dangerous this year for the rest of the conference? I think exactly that. I think we're pretty deep uh, when we're all back. You know, obviously we missed Moses today, so that's a big help. That's an all-conference guy for us. So um, just our versatility and our depth, I think, will be huge in the end. 
But yeah, I think the depth tonight was a, was a huge point. Um, yep. You know, going into Wednesday, I think that's going to be a factor. I think, you know, getting people healthy. Moses, what, Moses wasn't out there tonight. Just gives you one more huge weapon. Yeah. But uh, what can you take just personally from this game? I mean, you, you weren't at full strength, I would say, for a majority of the season last year. And what's it feel to get back on the floor? Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I'm smiling. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> it's, I'm just so happy to be out there and compete with my guys, man. We have a great group. I mean, it really is family. Um, I love those guys to death. So just to get out there and battle with them, it killed me last year to not be at full strength when I did play. And then when I wasn't playing, it was really killer. So it was just awesome to get back out there and bump. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us in this post game. Congrats on the win and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Go Pilots. All right, go Pilots. And Jen, any final thoughts on today's game but with Lewis and Clark? You know, I think they're going to learn a lot. Like you said, they're going to go back and they're going to watch film and take the positives, but also learn from it to get better going into Wednesday. And and I, I think the rebounding is going to be a huge factor moving forward. And, um, you know, it's hard to play in those games when you get a big lead like that. But uh, I think there's some definite positives. I think their inside play was better. I think the depth is huge. And I, I think they've, they've got, a, got a lot of good things to look at. There's some, a lot of positives, some things to work on out of this game, but it's the Pilots who take the victory 89-62 over Lewis and Clark and some exciting action coming to the bluff in the near future. That was Jennifer Mountain. I'm Brian Slyke. Thanks for tuning into our broadcast today. And don't forget, tomorrow is November 8th. Make sure you cast that ballot. We'll catch you next time on the WCC Network. Thanks.